Okay, so with the help of the master of the world, we're going to jump right back in to our limud of Rabbi Nachman's incredible sefer, of Nelson's incredible sefer, Sicha Saran, the conversations of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, we call it class trip with Rabbi Nachman, trying to journey with the Sadiq as he's sharing with us insights and stories and historical anecdotes and tidbits that really allow us into the world of Breslov, what this thing is, Breslov, what this derek is, what this path is, what this consciousness is, what this moach is. And so we're going to continue our learning from last week, where we delved very deeply into the Indian of Rosh Hashanah, particularly Rabbi Nachman's approach, obviously, to Rosh Hashanah, and what we learned very, very deeply about positive thinking, about what Rosh Hashanah really is, what it is, to go ahead and to have one day to recalibrate. We learned about finding who we really are inside the Pneumius, reconnecting with that point, what it means to be Sameach on Rosh Hashanah. We spoke so much about Simcha, about returning to our essence, about returning to our source, and we're rooted in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's place of Oz V'chedva B'Mekomo to really once again contact that initial earliest iteration, who we are at the core, at the essence. And today we're going to continue that Sicha, predominantly the sources that are going to enable us to unpack the latter part of the Sicha, the second half of the Sicha. But let's start from the beginning, Sicha Saran Chaf Aleph, and we begin again from the beginning. We'll just review what we did last time, and we will continue to try to unpack some of the later points in this very short sikha, so the second half, right? The seifa, right, of this, of the brisa over here, of this, of this sikha. So the Rebbe says like this, Again, for the beginning, Rebbe Nachman says, then a Rosh Hashanah person has to be a big chacham, very wise. What does that mean, wise? That a person should be thinking only good thoughts. That a Kodesh Baruch Hu is going to do good with us. He's got to do good with us. We learned so much about the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? The self-fulfilling thought that a person who believes mamish that we can go on and we can continue, we can restart. Such a person will have this chus to be able to restart. But a person who believes that we can't start again, Mamela, what are you going to do? That's going to be the biggest obstacle for him, a self-fulfilling sort of obstacle. Because the more you believe it's a brick wall, the more it's going to be a brick wall in the sense that you're not actually changing what it is essentially. But if you believe it to be an impassable uh, obstacle, then you're not going to be able to pass. Right? And then it will indeed have emerged to have been an impassable obstacle, but not objectively, only subjectively. So, so much relies on the way that we see things. We spoke about Noah, we spoke about Er, Noah, Matzachin Be'ini Hashem. Er does what's Ra Be'ini Hashem. He sees himself reflected, and his own perception of how God sees him informs how he tries to then interact with the Kodesh Baruch Hu or otherwise. Thank you so much for coming. Which Marshall? That's exactly right. It's just an illusion. Be able to realize it's just an illusion. Video. Exactly right. We learned about the importance of being very joyous in Rosh Hashanah. And over here, we're going to begin to unpack these two final statements and final parts in this sikha about what Rosh Hashanah is and how a Jew is supposed to act and behave on Rosh Hashanah. All right, Benachman over here says, Gam Srikhim Livchais for Rosh Hashanah. Person has to mamish cry on Rosh Hashanah. We're going to learn about what that crying is. But it's very important to try to go ahead and to shed some tears on Rosh Hashanah. We spoke in the beginning of last week's Sicha that it doesn't necessarily need to be mamish crying, even though, of course, that's the ideal. But it's hard for us. It's hard for us. We're very numb. We're much more emotionally overstimulated than any generation previous. We're exposed to a lot more good news. We're exposed to a lot more bad news, maybe in the span of a month than they were in their entire lives. And so we develop a shell, a callousness. And sometimes it's a good thing. Most of the time, it's not such a good thing. But therefore, it's very, very hard for us to work up those genuine emotions because there's so much in, in, in terms of barriers that we've built, right, to protect ourselves. We're very numb. And so we spoke about even to produce the sound, either to pretend, but it's not pretending, right? You know, and this is an important point that we've spoken about, I'm sure, in the past. That in Musr Svarim, you find the concept of an external action, right, awakens the inside. And it's brought already from the Sefer Achino. I think one of the earliest um, expressions of this idea from Marishan and the Sefer Achino. And the Mazil Sharm obviously brings this down powerfully, and many of the other Svarim follow suit. But by Hasidus, it wasn't so much that the external actions are awakening something inside that wasn't there before. It's Tnuach Yitzayinis is Megala By Hasidus, we start from the premise 
that a Jew inside, 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 at the earliest, deepest core, at the, at the, at the, at the most primordial aspect of a Jew's being, we find in that place perfection. We find in that place holiness. We find in that place goodness. We find in that place debekus. You don't get more double than that. That's what we find at the core. I, after that, there's a lot of layers of dust. And after that, there's a whole lot of obstacles and a whole lot of barriers that prevent that essential goodness and holiness from coming to expression. But that doesn't mean that it's not there. It means that it's there, it's covered over. When we go through the motions, right, we're not only trying to go ahead and then awaken up something within that's going to fit our external actions. When we're going through the motions, you know what kind of motions we're going through? Not external motions. We're going through the deepest, deepest internal emotions that are happening deep under the surface, and we're allowing those to come to the fore. That's a very, very different perspective. And without going into the depth now, that perspective changes everything, right? Because when you work from that premise, then it's not about trying to go ahead to get somewhere that we're not, but it's just trying to get away all the other external extraneous material that's sort of covering over what we essentially are changes everything. And that's Hasidus. Tnuach Yitzayinus is not Me'or HaPnimius, but is Megala HaPnimius. That's a very, very fundamental distinction. And so here what we're speaking about, Rabbi Nachman says, Gam Tzrichim Lubechoyz V'Rashashana, that a person needs to cry in Rosh Hashanah. Sometimes we've got to fake it. That's what we're speaking about. But we're mamish not faking it, right? What we're doing is, in trying to go ahead and imitate Kishama Hashem Kol Bichyi, that the master of the world has heard the sound of my crying, we are tapping into that place that's always crying inside. By starting Tivchanamshi. We're tapping into that place that's mamish crying. And this that we're not physically crying is just a hester, is a covering over what's actually going on. So by imitating the sound of crying, we're enabling a channel to open up between the deepest core of who we are to bring it out into the physical bapala, right? But that's a very important nikuda. Kishom Hashem kol There's a lot of other nice ramazim to this Torah about this. I'll just give you two right now. One is the way in which the Aron Kodesh, the Aron HaKodesh, right? That was in Mamash the Kodesh of Kodashim. The outside was gold and the inside was gold and there was a wooden box in the middle. That means to say that a Jew's outside goal, the outer goal that seems to be trying to be mashpia on the wood, that that's how we view it, right? We think that like inside is just wood, we feel nothing. Outside, we'll try to be misled and we'll try to move our arms and we'll try to feel something and dance a little bit. We're not happy inside. No, 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 no. The outside gold is only a reflection of what's beyond that wood, that inside is mamish gold also. Find a similar thing by Yaakov Avinu, right? That Yaakov Avinu is battling with the Sarashal Esau and by Yehovik Ishimo Chazal says, Chazal say, I'm sure I've said this to you in the past, but it's good to review. Chazal say, by Yehovik Ishimo is that the Avat, the dust of Yaakov Avinu, was going up. Mamish, it reached to the Kisya Akava. Mamish reached to the Kisya Akava. And what does that mean? That Esav is telling Yaakov Avinu, by Yehovah Yaakov Lavado, Yaakov when Yaakov Avinu is alone, is all alone. And that means that Esav comes to a Jew, by Yehovah Yaakov Lavado, when a Jew is all alone, the Bnei Yaakov. And, and, and Esau says that's very nice that you're behaving in a certain way when you're around other people, when you're around other Jews, and you're dominating the minion. And it's very nice when you're in the base medrash and you have a mascara and you have chavrusas and you have societal expectations. What about when you're all alone? How are you going to act then when you're on an island somewhere on vacation if you don't have a minion to daven with or whatever the, 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 you know, the nature is corona, right? It was a good, a, a good marker of this. How do you daven then? And Esau wants to tell Yaakov, you know, ah, you see, that all of your external sort of expressions of tzidkis, adam yarishamayim begalui, is only when you're around other people. But the seser, it's not intrinsically essentially there. There's no la'olami adam yarishamayim the seser ubegalui. The seser is not there. It's contingent on other people. But by vasi yakub lavade, look, you're not the same way that you were. And the avak reaches the kisya uncovered, which shows you what's up there. The pnei yakub is chakuk on the kisya uncovered. That means that there's a Yaakov Avinu below. And that's the way in which a Jew is expressing himself externally. And then there's a big gap. And there's a whole lot of dust. And there's a whole space and a tremendous ladder of ups and downs. And a person that doesn't seem, right, or doesn't, right, that, that person doesn't seem when he's alone, that he's the same kind of person when he's around other people. But beyond that, there's the Pnei Yaakov that's Chakot Amikisa. So there's the gold inside. There's the gold outside, and then there's the wooden box in between, but that's chitzonim. 
And so people ordinarily think of ourselves as having two elements. There's the external and the internal. But Hasidus comes to be a that there's a point beyond that internal point, And that point is ever pure, ever holy. And the question is how much we're tapping it or not tapping it. So that's an Indian. Even to go ahead and to go through this Nikud of Kol Bichni, just to try to, uh, to pretend a little bit, but it's Mamish not pretend. And finally, we made mention of this last time as well. On the first day, we spoke about how, how much you shouldn't speak about, speaking about speech on Rosh Hashanah Mamish to really be Mamayit Dibur as much as possible. But Amar and he said, Shadam Gadol, that a big tzaddik, Tzarek Ladaktik Vizabiyos has to be very, very careful about the speech on Rosh Hashanah, the Alkane, and therefore Abnasan records that who, Rabbi Nachman, the Rabbi Nachman would not even say the piyuta. He wouldn't even say any of the extraneous, extra, it's not extra, obviously, right? But anything that's not mamish and ikar yisod of Anchi Knesset Gdol of what this davening is supposed to look like, he would leave that out. Rak Mashi Yasser Rabbi Lazar Akaler, what Rabbi Lazar Akaler was the chink python, right? It was the, it was the, it was the head, the rosh pythonim. He would recite those piyutim, Abal Shar Hapayit, all of the other stuff, Eino Oimer, he wouldn't say. And that's even in Kedusha. Machmas, Sha'adam Gadol, a very holy, elevated, big person. Sarich, Ledaktik, Oz, V'yoyser, Levli, Ledaber, Shem, Dibo, Shein, Mokhach, Mamish, not to speak at all. And that's what we said last week. And even in Uman, right, by the, by the Oivim, you find that it's much quieter. Much, much, much quieter. The first night, everything is a lot more toned down. It's a lot more introspective. There's a lot of, you know, trying to get through the Suda and then go on your own and, and do your own avoidance, not to, not to be speaking so much. So just to be conscious of it, you know, everything within normal mm -hmm. measures and so on and so forth, but to be conscious of this Nikuda of, uh, of, of Dibor on the night, and we'll speak a little bit more about that toward the end of tonight's year. Okay, so let's jump into the sources here. We begin with a piece from Shara Kavanis, Jushi Rosh Hashanah, where we speak about the concept of crying. And crying dafka with regard to the Yom and the Ram from the Rizal specifically. So he writes over here with Shara Kavanas Arabino Arizal Drushi Rosh Hashanah Isa. It's broad, and this is Rabbi Mital writing, obviously, with the scribe of the Arizal, much like Rabbi Nassim is a scribe of Rabbi Nachman. Gam Hayanoi Heg Moiri Zal Livchis Harbe Gitzfilas Rosh Hashanah. He says that the Arizal's minhuk was to cry very, very much during the Tfilah of Rosh Hashanah, Afilushu Yamte, even though it was a Yamte. We're going to learn based on Rabbi Nachman's understanding of what Bechia is, is that it's not a spirit of Baal, but even though crying is normally associated with sadness and brokenness, even though it was a yantif, it was crying very much. Don't even start talking about Yom Kippur, right? Where Mamish, obviously, he was crying much more. And Arizal says, and listen to this very sharp words, Mamish sharp words. This itself should make us cry. A person who is not moved and stirred at some point to tears on these days, that itself demonstrates that the neshama is not whole, that there's something deficient. Now, again, deep, deep, deep inside, we're crying all the time. And deep inside, certainly on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, we're crying. But it means to say that we've not yet been Megala, that point inside of us that's Mamish Shalom all the time, but the Shalimus has not yet reached that outer gold box of the art, right? It hasn't yet come to the surface. And again, that, that itself could make us cry. If a person finds in Rosh Hashanah that you're not crying, that itself is a reason to cry, right? Because what's going on, it means that we're not, there's something, something off. There's something off. The gravity of this day. No. The, 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 the essentiality of this day. The way in which it cuts to the core of our identity, of our relationship with Hashem. What Rosh Hashanah is. And that reason I would also say, that are those that are going through judgment on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. And the first day of Rosh Hashanah is much more serious than the second day. It could be also that that's why Rabbi Nachman said that the Indian of speech, whatever that is, we're going to talk about, is not on the first day, not the second day, because the din is much more kasha the first day. And then there are others that are judged on the second day where it's a little bit of a lighter judge, judgment. There's a difference between the first day of Rosh Hashanah and second day of Rosh Hashanah, even though halachically it's, continue, it's considered one day, but Kabbalistically there's a difference between the first day and the second day in terms of the level and severity 
of the judgment that's being handed down on those days. The right Sakharaj Baruch Laracham Alay Madana Sambiyam Shane and are those that a Kurdish Baruch has a lot of mercy on and says it's better to go ahead and judge these people on the second day when it's Dina Rafya. It's a little bit of a lighter din. But Amar. And so the Arizal says, Kia Adam and I fell asala bahia rabba me ila biyama me ilu bitvila say, who I rush and he doin him or is a He says a person that's constant that's all of a sudden stirred to tears on the first day. That shows that you're being judged in that moment. When a person is, is bursting out crying on the second day, what does that show? He's being judged on the second day. So it's good to keep in mind this way. Impiam Rishim Impiam Shane is interesting. So you turn the page, and here we have a piece from the Balatanya, which speaks about this Nikuda Mamash from Rabchaim Vital that we just learned from the Ariya Kaddish and a little bit of a depth. Of why this is an important Nakuda crying Dafka and Rosh Hashanah. This is from the Kutu Taira, Tarshish Kisetsa. And the Heli Garizal says the following, and to all those that are following, that are, that are watching, that don't have the papers in front of you, we'll be sending them out, Bezer Shem, so you'll be able to do Chazar with the papers. I apologize, it would just be too much to have to scroll and, you know, give the shear also in person. So the Heli the Balatani says the following. Ki, ne malos, no madregas, habachia, bechinas, shuvi, ila, hagadol, mikula. Crying, says the Balatani, is mamish and akuda of what? Of tshuva in love, a very elevated, incredibly high form of tshuva. Shekam babachinus madrigas yesh b'tshuva. Ila, because he says even within tshuva ila, even within a very high level of tshuva, there's many, many, many levels. V'hu'a oila al kulana, and the highest level of the higher kind of tshuva, tshuva ila, is tears. As when a person is moved to tears, a person is crying. Vihi ha'oila al kulana, that's the highest kind. And about this, the Pasik says, with, with bechi, with crying, they'll enter. There's a bechina of yavayu, there's a bechina of entering into the gates of holiness. That's dafka through what? Through bechi, through crying. Uksiv and the Pasik says, right? When Basia discovers Moshe Rabbeinu floating down the Nile River, she discovers that there's what? There's a nar boicha, there's a baby, there's a child crying inside. And she had mercy on him. And this is what is said about Rabbi Kiba. And of course, he's speaking allegorically on that Pasuk, that it doesn't only mean, okay, you find a Pasuk where there was a Nara that was crying and somebody had mercy on him, but it means the same thing for us. And the Shrina, Baska is also the Shrina, right? Kabbalistically. And it means that when we're tapping into that inner child within, when we tap that essential holiness, that abides, that exists beyond all the dust in between the face of Yaakov Avinu below and the face of Yaakov Avinu on the Kis Yaakov, beyond the wooden box that's in between the, the two boxes in the Arn, when we tap into that in place of the Nar and, and Baicha, and it brings us to tears because we're so clear in that moment of who we are and how we've been acting in a way that might not be aligned with our deepest essence, what happens? So that's how Kodesh Baruch Hu has mercy on us, Mishkina has mercy on us. So that's that Pasuk. And here he brings an amazing, amazing Maim of Chazal about Rabbi Kiva. Sha'amra Rabbi Kiva, Kisha'amra Shira Shirim. And this is going to be very intuitive. We're going to learn something deep about this. That when Rabbi Kiva was saying Shira Shirim, Zolgu Einav Demonis, his eyes were pouring forth tears. Shira Shirim, not the Teichacha, and not other parts that we would think are clearer why somebody would be crying when he's reading the Teichacha, when he's reading Eicha, Shira Shirim. We're going to learn a special kind of Bechir. What this means, dafka shira shira, that you would think is, you know, why are you crying during shira shira? It's not a cry of brokenness. Adarab, shira shira is the most beautiful, wonderful expression of closeness, of essential, unconditional closeness between Amiso and Kodesh Baruch, between Kodesh Baruch, what's the, what's the muffin for crying? We're going to learn about what crying is. But this is what we find that Rekiba was crying over here. Shavachi alazuhu machmas. What's this crying about? Dveikus hanefesh besharsh. It's about an incredible dveikus. It's about an incredible closeness with us, with our source that brings about tears. It's 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 more of a, not even a nostalgia, but but when we're moved, we're overcome with the emotion of being able. Many you know over Corona, whose grandparents they couldn't see for six months, and all of a sudden, finally, you're able to go in and hug your grandma, your grandfather, all of our grandparents should be good. You know, should be should be healthy, Beis Hashem, and. Um, and live on Meva Asram Shana, when you have that ability to go ahead and to hug a grandmother, to hug a grandfather, to hug a parent, there's tears. What's the tears? What is that? What's the tears? It's not tears of sadness, either of it. 
It's tears of being overcome with the dvekas, with the closeness, with the love. And it's true with you love. That's what we're talking about. That's that incredibly elevated shir hashirim de kachuva. That's beyond, you know, regret. It's beyond that. It's the joy that overwhelms us. It's the, it's the deep nostalgia, that element that brings us back in touch with our deepest essence of dvekas v'sharshenu. That's the nakuda of what? Of Rosh Hashanah. To begin. Mamish to begin again. To go back to the beginning. To be able to dig, dig, dig beyond all the dirt and the dust and to be able to uncover that Be'er Ma'im Chaim underneath that's full of living waters where we're still innocent, where we're still pure. That princess that gets lost, al derech, right? But derech siparti ma'isa. To be able to get back in touch with that, that brings us to tears. That's Shir Hashirin. That's the Dvekris, that deep, deep bonding of the soul, Bishar Shalomala, in its source, not only in its source in the master of the world, but like we speak about in chapter one of the story of our lives. What's the Iker Tshuva? It's Tshuva to ourselves, Tshuva to our true selves. And it says, Rav Cook, when a person really taps into who he deeply is at the core, what do you find? You find the Kodesh Baruch The Tshuva to who we are is Tshuva to Hashem. Because that's what we find when we dig deeply enough and we discover our essence and that holiness at our essence. That's the Nakuda of Dvekas, of Shira Shira. When you connect to such a point that it's beyond what the soul is able to handle, right? You're not able to even, uh, uh, you know, sort of contain your emotions and it just overflows. And that's what the piece that Sarabha says in, uh, in Ish Koda. She says, you know what crying is? Crying is, Mamash, when you take a cup of water and you try to pour into another cup, and eventually you pour it over too much water and the cup doesn't have the capacity to hold it, so it overflows. He says, crying is what happens when your water level, so to speak, when your emotion level, chesed is my, my is chesed, when that feeling of emotion just overflows more than your body, which is the kli, can hold it, and it overflows and it comes out of the eyes. That's what tears are. It means that you, lo yucha le sapik, right? What it says about, what it says about the yoysev at sapik, right? That he had to run into the next room. He couldn't contain himself. That's what tears are. And that's what it means coming Rosh Hashanah, where you feel such an overwhelming dvekus in our source that we don't have kalim, we push it, don't have kalim. It's not a crying of brokenness. Adar, it's a crying of shir, shir. It's a crying of tshuvu ilah. It's a crying, as we'll see from Rabbi Nachman in the next source, of, of simcha, ultimately. Ash'en shalat baruach lichli. We can't handle it. Okay, we'll skip the next line. It's not relevant for us now. The al inyan bechia zu says the Balatanya about this bechia about this crying. Isa b'shem harizal. It's brought from the name of the harizal. What we just learned. She kol misha ein avoyche b'rosh hashanah v'yamakipurim ein nishmasish lim. It's about this kind of crying that the harizal referred when he said that a person who does not break out into tears on rosh hashanah and kippur, which as we've mentioned, are days not of judgment and fear and 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 regret and shame and guilt and all of that we. You know, ordinarily associate with Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, Mamish not, but they're days of Ma'ade Ad Yimlech Melech Elyon. Rabbi Kabuchul Mas Al Malchusech of Yida Kol Pol Ki Alta Be Alta. When we have such clarity, and we have clarity not only into the nature of the world, Hayim Haras Olam, what this world is about, what the birthplace of Olam Helim is about, Hayim Haras Helim. Why did? Why is there so much Helim in my life? Why is there so much darkness in the world? Why is there so much brokenness in this experience? But we get clarity into who we are. We get clarity into Tshuva Tashim to return, not just to our Kodesh Baruch with our deepest selves, in that moment. We should feel a stirring of emotion that's so deep and that's so expansive and that's so incredibly earth shattering that our Kalim can't handle it and, and it overflows. That's the, that's the, that's the kind of the Chia that Dariza was speaking about, that if a person doesn't go ahead and, and, and isn't moved to tears of this kind, it means that the shlameless of the Neshama inside hasn't yet been tapped. It means that there's still dust, and it means that there's still a layer where we think we're caught up in, in that sandstorm of everything that we're not, of all the, those machshavas zaris, right, of all of those foreign thoughts and all of those foreign identities and all of the aspects of my life that I become identified with, but is mamas the nachash hakad moini that originally is outside of other, and then only after the eitz adas tegura becomes inside, but it's still a separate being. It's not who we are. It means that you haven't yet gotten out of that identification. But the moment that we do, and the moment that that shlemus hanefesh is tapped, and we're able to really, it's a, it's a crying again. I, I, let's reiterate, it's not a crying of, look how terrible I am, look how broken I am. It's look how good I am. 
Look how holy I still am. Look at how strong we are. After inquisitions and holocausts and pogroms and 2,000 years of mamish torture and agony, after all of this, there's a defiance. It's, you know, to anybody who's familiar with the story of the lost princess, and I hope all of us are and all of us will be, and the story of our lives. So at the very, very end, we find that when the viceroy is faced with that third giant, and the giant is trying to convince him that what, that what he's looking for doesn't exist, and there's no other giants to ask anymore. This is it. This is the end. This is the biggest mania shayesh. What does the viceroy do? The imam bursts into tears, and he starts crying. What are those tears? It's not a tears of, of giving up, of sadness that he was misled because he still believes with every fiber of his being that the princess that he's spoken to, that he's been toiling for decades and decades and decades and lifetimes, that she's mamish there and she's accessible, that he's still pure, that he's still holy, that every Jew still contains that ability to contact that place of holiness within. He starts to cry. It's a cry of defiance. It's a cry of, of, of we made it. We're here. We don't understand how excuse me, we're hanging on for dear life and we're not able to go ahead and, uh, and, and sometimes live in accordance with our deepest ideals, but we're not allowing ourselves to be swayed by all of those external voices, even though they're inside of us, but we understand them as being external and not giving up. And that moves a person to tears. That's that crying that that Rizal says that if a person doesn't cry in Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, it means that we're not there yet. It means that we have a... a, 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 a improper approach on, on what Rosh Hashanah is and what the crying of Rosh Hashanah is supposed to be because that kind of crying we think to ourselves we have no shaykhs with, right? The kind of crying that is, has to do with like sidkas and like we care so much about our veiras and so on and so forth, that crying we may think it's for tzaddikah alien that they know what an avera is and that they know and so on and so forth, but not for us. But this kind of crying, shaykh for each and every This kind of crying is even a higher kind of crying than that. But mamish we have shaykhs with it. Dafka we have shaykhs with it. Dafka, the lower a person is, the more he has shaykhs with it, because the more defiant, that resetting, that recalibrating is on Rosh Hashanah. Me reishis, Hashanah. This is going to be the year. We know it's going to be the year. Ah, how many Achrashanas were there already? Achrashanah, Shana, Shana, Shana. It wasn't the right year. It wasn't the year that we mamish broke through, but it makes no difference. We're coming back with strength. Me reishis, Hashanah. We're starting fresh. We're tapping into the Eretz Yisrael inside. Eretz Hashem, Hashem, Tamar of the Kechav, Me reishis, Hashanah. We're tapping into the Eretz HaKodesh, to the Yerushalayim within, to the Besam Mikdash within, to the Kodesh HaKodashim within, to the Aron within, and to the Golden Box within the Aron within. Tamid, Eini Hashem Alei Kechaba, Mireshes, Hashem. That's what gives us strength. The Ikra B'Yam Kippurim, and the Balatani finishes, he says, the Ikra of this kind of crying is Yom Kippur, Bechinos Tshuva Ila L'Pnei Havaya Tataru. We come to a very elevated place, Yom Kippur is Mamish, Ta'inu, we made a mistake, Titanu. You, you, you led us astray. Right? Titanu, we were led astray. We don't understand how our lives went so miserably wrong, but we believe that everything until this very moment, it's all part of the master plan. And I'm starting fresh and starting from now. Dafka, Kuyimachim Dvarim. Dafka, picking up the broken pieces of all of my mistakes and building something beautiful out of it. Veshuvah Lashem. Dafka, Ta'inu, Titanu. We give it up to Akadish Baruch, Kesa El Bina very lofty levels that are revealing themselves and are being revealed on Rosh Hashanah L'fnei Hashem Titaru, Mamish L'fnei Hashem, Mamish L'moichim, Mamish and the Panim from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, L'fnei Hashem Titaru. That's what's cleansing us. In that place, there's Makom anymore to go through. I am so low. I'm so broken. I'm so... You come to that place of Ni'ila, like the Tzadik can say, what's Ni'ila? Ni'ila is not, oh, the gates are closing. We're being locked out. Ni'ila means, like the Vitevsker said, Ni'ila means Mamish, we're brought in. And, and HaKadosh Baruch locks the door behind us. And it's just us and HaKadosh Baruch. That place of Ni'ila is beyond anymore. It's like a fury. It's quick. And I'm Zohar to Davin for the Ahmed on Yom Kippur. Everything is, is with fire. And you're not even, you know, between Vidu to Vidu to Vidu. And it's not even Viduian, right? Maybe right in the beginning. It's, 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 it's Hashem, Hashem, Karachim. It's just the mamish, the midas of Rachim. And you can't even, you know, count on your fingers how many there are. It's just from one to the next, to the next, to the next. It's like a, it's like a fire. It's a whirlwind of, of dveikas. This is who we are. It's an ila. It's dveikas b'shayrish. Tshuva ila. It's much more than a crying over guilt or shame. It's, it's far beyond that. And Hasidus wants to speak to that kind of, of Yiddish, like to the shir, shirim aspect. Not of all the lowliness of, of how how lowly we are and 
and what we have to fix and so on and so forth. Certainly we have to understand what there is to be misakin, but not in a way of saying that I am essentially broken. Now let me go ahead and try to reframe and try to go ahead and not reframe rather, but let me go, to, go ahead and try to fix, you know, what I perceive to be broken within me, but to say, no, 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 I'm shalim. Mama shalim within. And all the brokenness is an illusion. And it's up to me simply to wipe away these external uh, layers of dust to be able to reveal who it is that I really am. And that comes to the fore on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Like I see them, they, they don't look forward to Purim with as much excitement as they look forward to Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, like we said, Rabbi Nachman said, the second Rosh Hashanah is over, he's already listening out to hear them banging on the wall, calling everybody to sleep as ready for the next year. Because Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Nachman says again, my whole thing is Rosh Hashanah, my whole thing. Starting again, essentiality, cut through all the externalities, all the all of this extraneous things, not just physically in the world in terms of distractions and taivas and kin the taiva covenant with sinas and alam. Decide for that, even in Yiddish time, to cut through all of the distracting elements of this sugya and that Allah and this nikuda to reveal what's at the core, the princess of it. What is this all about? That at the end of the end of the end of the day. That's the Nihila where it's just you and a Kurdish Baruch Hu, and you're requested to bring your authenticity to that moment, your sincerity to that moment. The whole you have you done as kol ha'adam lekavskos, the whole person, mamash, who you are in your wholeness inside, not the separate aspects of what you do and you know what are some of the mistakes that you make. Those are secondary to bring mamash your whole self. And when you can do that, you tap into a place of bechia, but a bechia of the highest, most elevated truth. And here Menachman elaborates on this. This is, this is in the Kutuman Kuf Ayin Hay, a very famous teaching. It was actually one of the first tarahs that I saw in the Kutuman. This and the piece before it. My father told me to look it at, look, look, look it up, and it was mom's changed my life. These two pieces. And the Heliger Rabbi Nachman says the following: Iker Milus Habachia. What is crying all about? And again, this speaks directly to everything we've been talking about up until now. What's the Iker Milus Habachia? And again, the, the Milus Habachia is, is very important. He's not simply saying, what is the advantage of crying? What's the milus habachia? What's the highest form of crying? Because there's many kinds of crying. There's many aspects of crying. There's a crying of tshuva tata. There's many levels within tshuva tata. There's a crying of tshuva love, higher tshuva, many levels there. What's the milus habachia? What's the highest level of crying? He says, Rabbi Nachman, kisha adam, machmas simcha. I'm sorry, kisha he, when it is machmas chedva v'simcha because of an incredible celebration, because of an incredible deep joy, not a little bit of a happiness, something went right in your life. Beyond that, it's a deep-seated, essential joy that cuts through, that's beyond any pleasure, that's beyond any good news. It's mamish the deepest. Even the regret that a person often feels, it's very good for that kind of regret to be mixed in to the joy of being able to return by means of, of identifying what are those things that I need to fix? What are those things that are the external distractions of my life that aren't connected to who I am, the Canadians? That it should be out of joy. Because of our incredible rejoicing by Kaddish Baruch, you think Kaddish Baruch is, what do you, how do you think Hashem's face looks on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur? Because Baruch is, is smiling from one end of the world to the other. We're coming back for God's sake, literally for God's sake. I mean, what does he want from us, right? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the whole year asks us to return, and for 10 days of the year, we're mamish and a matzah of returning. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, is, is arms, yimin chapshuta lekabal shavim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, is overflowing with incredible acceptance and love for us. And so when we're approaching, when we're doing our charata, let it be basking in the light. It should be in the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's face. L'pnei Hashem titaru, l'pnei Hashem titaru. Because of this incredible rejoicing, when a Jew returns, it's, it's not walking sluggishly, it's dancing. Tshuva needs to be dancing toward a Kaddish Baruch dancing back home, dancing not in a way like we often think about Tshuva as contorting ourselves, and it's so difficult and what we're giving up, and this is not really what I want, but I got to do it, I'm going to feel very guilty. It's not. There's nothing more natural to the Jewish heart than Tshuva. You're not only returning to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and leaving yourself behind. You are returning to you, to who you really are, to who I really am. That's what Tshuva is. And such a Tshuva is, is Mamish dancing. Such a Tshuva needs to be with dancing. Like we learned last week, dancing into the Book of Life. Mamish dancing, right? Now those who were dancing were already written in the Book of Life. And those that were standing on the side somber, it wasn't so clear, right? Mamish dancing. 
that yearning that Rabbi Nachman spoke so deeply about, that Rabbi Nachman describes in Chaim Aran as the Gaguim around Rabbi Nachman Friday night, if you can imagine what that was, the Zemiris, if you can imagine, imagine what that is. That Rabbi Nachman describes the Hasidim as climbing the walls out of their Gaguim. They didn't know what to do with it. They push it, were out of their Kalim. To just imagine what, these, what this group of broken people lit up with the tar of Mashiach Mamish, sitting in the throes of Gullahs in the deepest exile, whose hearts were on fire with tar with Atika Stima, what's called in Kisri Bresla, the, the Yain Hungary, the Hungarian wine. Mamish, the, the tar of Mashiach. I mean, they didn't have Kalim for it. Ramnasa says, just imagine these Hasidim just try, crawling at the walls, like, they don't know what to do with themselves. That's what Minachim wanted. Shlomo Kesh just put out a song with, with Nisim Black, also based on a Sikh and Chaim Aran, that Ramnasa said it. It's very nice that you'll be good Jews, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted people like animals howling in the forest that night. That's what I wanted. Out of Kalim. Mamish, a yearning that's unbearable. That's Mamish unbearable. And that's what the tshuva is supposed to be out of. This unbearable, ferocious, wild, Mamish, wild yearning. That, by the way, doesn't have to look wild on the outside. Inside. Inside. You can look contained. And in your heart could be a fire that's burning from one end of the world to the other. We spoke about the silent screen, right? About that silent screen. That's the ikr. Rabbi Nachman wants a contained person that inside is, I mean, you know, the, the heavens can't hold such a feeling, such a storm of emotion. This that a person went ahead and he's acted in a way that was improper, and a person's yearning now to be able to come back. And a person goes ahead and is overcome with crying, but again, it's not a crying of sadness or brokenness. It's out of joy. This is the Iker Maila of Bakhia, Shatia, Machma, Simcha, that it should be out of joy. Nachman explains that this is why the word Bakhia, who Rashi Tevos, is a mnemonic for the Pasuk, Bishimcha, Yigilun, Kol Hayyim. In your name, Hakadish Baruch, Hu, we rejoice the whole day. That's what Shatia is Bakhia. That's the Ikra Mailas Habakhiya when it's out of this incredible rejoicing. She Ikra Habakhiya should be a Machma Simcha Bishma Yisbah. That's the Ikra. One other Nakuda also, we're going to learn here from from Kutumran Rashimun, is that the whole thing of Rosh Hashanah is that we're trying to be Mam Shechua Hashgacha. We're trying to bring the reality of Akadish Baruch Hu's Hashgacha back into our lives, that we should be conscious of it. That we should again draw the Eine Hashem Alekecha Ba Mereshis Hashanah. But Mereshis Hashan, right? What's the headquarters for the Eine Hashem Kamen Alekecha Ba? Mereshis Hashan is from Rosh Hashan. The whole Indian of Rosh Hashan is drawing down that Hashgacha from a Kodesh Baruch. Says Rabbi Nachman, how do you do that? How do you awaken Hashgacha? Says the Yedagrab is Kosiyah Gamleinu. Vazai Moirid the Moiz based on a Gemara. We can't go into the whole thing now, but there was a certain necromancer, like a certain sorcerer, who was asking one of the Amiraim, he asked him, what's an uh, earthquake? And he started to explain to him, what's an earthquake? He says, when a Kaddish Baruch who remembers that his children are in exile, are in gullahs. And he goes ahead and he cries over that. He says, two tears drip from his eyes and fall into the Yamagado. And from that, the whole earth shakes. The Koylanishma and the and the, and the, and the, and the voice is heard, the sound is heard from one end of the world to the other. And that's what causes an earthquake. Says the Heliger Rebbe, what does that mean? What does that mean that a Kaddish Baruch who cries? doesn't have eyes and he doesn't cry, physical tears. What does this mean? He draws hashkacha upon us. Because tears, crying is associated with hashkacha, with God's providence. On the passing that after the rain, the clouds return. This is referring to eyesight. That after a person cries, after the Geshem in our own physiological state that's associated with tears, what happens? Shavua Avim, the clouds come and we lose our eyesight. Says Rabbi Nachman, what does that mean? That means that each and every tear contains a little portion of eyesight. What's HaKadosh Baruch Hu's eyesight? It's Hashem's Hashgacha. Nimsa, you find, Shad Moisin Loikhim Chelek Horus, that our tears, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu's tears, but our tears 
contain a little bit of our eyesight in them. And that's why if a person cries and cries and cries and cries, that's why they ain't Leah Rakis, right? Leah's eyes, her eyesight wasn't so good because she spent so many years crying over this that she thought that she was going to go to the portion of Asaph, right? Because the older one to the older one. But this Nakuda of eyesight being drawn into the tears is this aspect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu crying. Because in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's tears are flowing that incredible Ashkacha. What does it mean that Hashem cries? It means that it's like 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 it's what we do down here, HaGadosh Baruch is doing up there. Da malamala, we should know that what's above, mimcha, is coming from you, like an Abshachayim, the Jewish slave, the other said he can say. So memela, Rosh Hashanah, that we're trying to draw down this hashgacha of tamid eni Hashem, eni Hashem, alekecha, me reish is Hashem, v'ad ach Hashanah, which is koi lo nishma, min soifa ilam, v'ad soifa is the same thing as reish is Hashanah, v'ad ach Hashanah, what it is in time, that is in makom, that's part of that Gemara over there, what do you do? You have to cry. And the tears were being ma'orer now shkach alakadosh baruch that when a Jew is crying leiv nishbar v'nidke alukim loy sivze as daka ani eshkan as daka right alakadosh baruch who goes down to those that are broken kar b'ashem v'nishbar leiv it's daka when a person is in such a massive where a person is able to be married the mountain is that awakens that alakadosh baruch who should come and alakadosh baruch who should be with that person. Okay, so the last couple of minutes will start. I don't think it will get through all the sources, but you never know. For the last 15 minutes, could be that we'll get through it. Let's try to see after the Shemai to do the best we can to get into Sichas Aran Chaf Beis. But that's that's Rosh Hashanah. And I think that really, you know, I, I was speaking to somebody, I was learning with somebody a separate piece from Mikutel, in Mikutei Alachas um, on Sunday morning. And I was telling him, because we were learning this piece, it's also about Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. There are thousands of Svarim on the Yom Tovim and Chagim, right? All the Tzadikim are speaking about the Yom Tovim from a thousand different angles and a thousand different approaches and different aspects of the Yom Tovim and the deeper meanings and messages. When Rabbi Nachman speaks about a Yantiv, he captures the essence of the essence of the essence of the essence of it, and everything else is Parshim. What Rabbi Nachman says about Purim and Tariyud is the essence of Purim. It's mamish, like the, the core, 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 core. It's not a Torah. It's not a nice thing to say over by a Sheva Brachis. You know, it's mamish, the deepest kernel of the essence of the core of what that Yantiv is. And so we hear what we just learned in last week's session and in the beginning of this, or the majority of this week's session, this is Rosh Hashanah. This is Rosh Hashanah, what it is at its mamish, its deepest essence, the Idach Zil Gemar. Anything that you learn from any of the tzaddikim that talk about, now, let's think about Rosh, what Shoifer is, and Malchi Yusuf with Shoifer is, and all these different elements. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you for printing the sheets. All of these includes are going to be sort of the layers and layers and layers and layers on top of the root of what this is, of the essence of what this is, what we've learned together last week and this week. So this is going to be an important shear to either Chazer, right, if you listen to the audio again, or the source sheets, if you've kept the source sheets, you have them on PDF, to review, go back before Rosh Hashanah, this is Hacham, Nam is Hacham. what we're supposed to be feeling, what we're supposed to be thinking, what Rosh Hashanah is all about, what we're supposed to be doing. This is uh, Rabbi Nachman's guide to Rosh Hashanah in five lines of Hebrew text. And a tiny little sicha in the, in, the, in the beginning of sicha saran that mamish contains what Rosh Hashanah is at its core. Okay, so here we get into sicha saran chav days. And the Rebbe says like this, and this is going to be a little bit of a prelude to sicha chav gimel, which is much longer, which we'll get into next week. This yafet shmai. Toiv ma'oid mishazayich elias mekor litzadik ami. Says Rebbe Nachman, it's a very good thing to be able to be close. And to build a kesher with a true tzaddik. Well, the tzaddik amiti, isn't it a true tzaddik? Hello, there's many tzaddikim. Rabbi Nachman says in Tinyana, I can't remember exactly which lesson right now. Rabbi Nachman says, Yesh harbe tzaddikim. There are many, many tzaddikim. But yesh nikudas ha'emes she'bein tzaddik. There's among those tzaddikim, there's an nikudas ha'emes. There's a certain gilui coming down through the Torah of a particular tzaddik or a particular kind of tzaddik that's revealing a level of MS that's even beyond the MS of all of the other tzaddik and hayoy stuff. Everything they're saying is MS. The mamish doesn't denigrate not one bit from any of the other tzaddik. There's a, there's a certain neshama that's sent to the world to be megale 
what we spoke about, the paninius of the paninius, the emes la'amito of what it is a Jew, of what it is Hashem, of what it is the Torah, that doesn't take, you know, uh, sh shortcuts. Mamish is, is, is at the essence, right, of, of, of what Yiddishkeit is and is able to capture that and give it over to the, to the Tamidim, the Hasidim, in this case, right, to give it over to the Tamidim so that they are mamish able to be on fire with the essentiality of Yiddishkeit. And it's not just sugyas and halachas and, and, and poiskim and, and, and musr and all the, and, and even Hasidas. There's something beyond that, right? And this is what the Hasidim, when it, the breast of the Hasidim, when they're singing Aisha's Chayal, sometimes we do it by us Friday night. I like to do the Vizmiris just to encompass everything. But sometimes we do the breast of Aisha's Chayal, and the Hasidim like to repeat this pasuk, Rabbi's Banas Asu Chayal. Rabbi's Banas Asu Chayal, Viat Alis, Alis, Alis Akulana, which means Rabbi's Banas Asu Chayal. There are many daughters, there are many women. Asuchayol that are doing this incredible acts of valor. Ba'at alis al kulin. Then there's a separate kind. It's not even. It's not better. It's not worse. It's pasha different. Yesh nekudas ha'emes shebein asadikim. And the Breslovers believe very, very strongly and feel very strongly that the tzaddik that spoke more than anybody else about the nekudah tzaddik emes, like the Gemara says, right? The one who kranid the inkursa, right? The one who brings the letter yila havi prunka. He should be the one who should read it, right? So it means to say, and that's not Moshe Yosef Tzadik. You know what? 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 Pari said to Yosef Tzadik. You're the one who's being able to go ahead and to and to and to interpret what my dream is. So you carry it out, right? So the one who's speaking about it, Memeila, means that he has a very strong kasher with it. But al kulana, this tyra, these ideas, this essentiality, this yearning, this gagua, this ish, shali tukar bias hamashiach. There's nothing like this that exists, right? Throughout history, we've spoken about this many times in the past. This kind of neshama was revealed in different generations, increasingly toward the end of time, in Rabbi Nachman, the Baal Shem HaKadosh, the Arizal, further back in time, Shem and Bar beyond that, Moshe Rabbeinu, right? all of these tzaddikim that are seen as spiritual game changers in the sense that once they came to the world and revealed their Torah, nothing was, was ever the same. Moshe Rabbeinu brings down the nigla of Torah, nothing's ever the same, changes all of humanity, every aspect of life, right? Mm -hmm. The, uh, the, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai reveals the Zohar Kaddish, changes Yiddish Kaid. The Arizal gives us the key to, uh, to, to, to the Zohar Kaddish, allows us to really understand what the Zohar Kaddish is saying with regard to how these Kabbalistic ideas manifest in the upper realms. The Baal Shem Kaddish brings Kabbalah down to earth, takes Kabbalah and invests it within our emotional, uh, you know, psycho-spiritual makeup. And there Rabbi Nachman of Breslau comes to Mamash take us home. Mamash to, to really take us home, the cherry on the top. Of, the, of this whole system, what's called the Chamesha Sichide Hadaris, these five unique tzaddik, these five towering souls that ultimately, rest of us believe, are part of the same Mishama that came throughout history to be able to move the ball along, and nothing was ever the same before, nothing was ever the same after. So then, include that tzaddik ends, right? That it doesn't necessarily need to mean that in every generation there's a tzaddik emes, right? In that generation. In Chabad, they speak about Nesidare, right? There's another concept in Chabad. And there's a great deal of speculation as to whether that's the same concept, a different concept, different sheet, there's different opinions, different approaches. But in Breslau, this is a very fundamental idea. And therefore, we are seen as having the ability to be mekasher to the tzaddik emes, to be able to have a relationship with this tzaddik by doing the eitzes. We spoke about in the Parsha Shiri recently, the importance of doing eitzes of the tzaddik, not just to learn the tzaddik, but to really put it into practice, right? Certainly to learn the, the, the svarim of the tzaddik. Or in another place says, the nashik shur v'nafshay is an element of ava, to love. You come to love the tzaddik. You know, that you come to have a debt of gratitude to this person that mamish changed your life in a thousand ways and gave you chai, mamish chai, and to show him a tzaddik and rather a few little bit of and cream chai and to give life, right? The, the Zarkar says that the tzaddikim, after they're already left the world, they're found in the world, that their impact is alive. Yaakov of Nuloy Nase, mamish, that they're really here, they're alive. We have the ability to contact them. Says Rabbi Nachman, it's a very good thing. To be makurib to a tzaddik amit, which is exactly what we're doing right now, is learning the words of, of, of a tzaddik emes. He la asid lavai because la asid lavai ksev the pasuk in Eiv tells us a scary thing. Le echos beknat bekan poisa aritz be now rishon nimena that a kodesh baruch who is going to sort of hold on to the edges of the earth and to shake the rishayim off of it, whatever that means. The, the earth doesn't have edges. That the edges of the earth will be grasped and, and, and the earth will be shaken like a garment. We're going to learn from the Zara Kaddish in a minute what, what the Zara's take on this. But a person who is close to the Tzadik, a person who 
had a Kesher to this kind of hasaga, to this kind of understanding of what it is, essentiality, what it is to be a Jew. At our essence, at our core, we are holy. And this is, this is very much Kesher to, uh, to, to what we have been speaking about until now, what Rosh Hashanah means. A person that has a Kesher to the Tzaddik Emes in such a way that he's able to have or to maintain contact with the essence, essence of who we are, because that's what the Sadiq Emes is revealing to us. He's revealing to us the deepest Hasaga in Hashem, the deepest Hasaga in the Jewish soul, the deepest Hasaga in the world at large, the deepest Hasaga in Torah and Mitzvahs, and so on and so forth. Such a person, as Ayachzik the Yoiches Atzme Batzad, will be able to hold on to the Tzadik when the whole world is shaped. And when everything is falling apart and crumbling and there's insanity upon insanity upon insanity and up is down and down is up and left is right and right is left and everything's falling apart. Holding on to the tzaddik, to that sanity, the initial kind will enable us to hold on, will enable us to be able to again tap in to the essence and not to allow ourselves to be drawn into the fringes of this grand cloth that's called human existence. The fringes being those things that are not essential. The machshavas zaris, those things that are foreign to us. Not to identify ourselves with the negative actions that are not us, but are solely and purely dust on the surface of this perfectly clean water bottle that has within it perfectly clean water. And because we look at it through this aspect of dust, so we think that the water is dirty inside, but to be able to maintain a connection to that place to move away from the fringes of this garment. It's stopped for the external. It's, I'm sorry, it's stopped for the edges that HaKadosh Baruch Hu holds onto. But it's sad because the center is the core is reminding us of our essence, of our center, of our core. So you'll be able to hold on because you'll be able again to escape from the fringes of our identity to again return to who we are at the deepest essence of our being. The initial kayam, loyan ninar, and we won't be shaken off in our ashram who spend all of their time hanging out at the edges of the edges of the edges of the externals, always looking outside of themselves for happiness, all, all always seeking further physical gratification to try to go ahead and to make life manageable from an external standpoint instead of tapping deeply into the core, into the root. Because we will have held on to the tzaddik who again is always speaking about the essence. The tzaddik manitim are always speaking about the essence of the essence of the essence. They don't speak pshatlach, they don't speak tyrus. They speak mamish, the core, only what's necessary, not a word more, not a word less, that's bringing us mamish, the sag of Mashiach, as the dawn of Mashiach continues to rise, you and I are basking in its, in its glow already. And the sun hasn't yet reached the horizon, maybe it's beginning to, but you and I are already having our lives illuminated with that with that ultimate hasaga, umalar's deal of das is Hashem k'maimli amachasim, but that nekud of shivisi Hashem when I disamid bechol drachet the ehu. What the whole shulchan aruch is about that it's preceded by that halacha. The tzaddikim don't necessarily speak about all the other halachas, and of course they do. But within all of those halachas, they penetrate to find the very first halacha shivisi. Hashem when I do That's what the tzaddik emes is. And so all those that are hanging out by the knuffes, by the external edges of the garment, they're going to be shaken off because they won't have that core to be able to return to. And so they'll fall right off. But those that are connected to the teachings of the tzaddik emes will able to, uh, to, to, to hold on and not allow ourselves to be fooled or deluded with regard to what our identity is and who we are. Let's take a look at the Malvim. And the next week, I guess, we'll continue with, uh, with the rest of it, because it takes a little bit more time to go to the next piece from Likud Imran and the Zohar Kaddish and, and the final piece from Likud Imran. But let's, uh, let's see the Malvim with this. We'll close for tonight and we'll continue next week with this. And I, like I said, it's a prelude to Sikha Chav So it's gonna, it's gonna work out nicely. It's like a little bit of an introduction. And the Eliga Malvim says on that Pasuk in Eo, I've listened to these beautiful words. Ki b'chol rega v'rega ha-shachar machlifes because the Pasuk, Preceding this pasuk of lechas v'knafes arts and iyad speaks about shachar, speaks about dawn, and the Kaddish Baruch Hu is speaking about again why do good things happen to bad people, why do bad things happen to good people, which is the essential question of the whole sefer iyad. And the Kaddish Baruch Hu is telling iyad, trying to explain to him a different mishalim that you don't know cheshvinus, you know you don't know what light is, what darkness is, why there's darkness for some, why there's light for others. And so the pasuk right before this pasuk refers to dawn, refers to daybreak, refers to the sun in the sky traveling around the earth. 
or the earth, right? The earth rather traveling, rotating around the sun to go ahead and to become illuminated by, by its light. And so the Malvim continues based on that Pasuk and says, rega rega every moment, hashachar makhlukas makom. Can you imagine this? In all of our midnights, and in the midnight of every single human being, in the darkest point of darkness, for every single person, there's a dawn happening at that very moment somewhere. Think about that for a second. At the same exact moment throughout world history that there was ever a midnight for any individual at any given second, there was also a dawn for other segments of humanity at that split second. That's the way, that's the chachma in which this world works, right? Is that darkness and light are constantly, constantly, constantly shifting constantly shifting every split second there's a daybreak somewhere and that's what the, that's what Malbim says here every moment and this world exists in a place where daybreak is just constantly traveling around the world it's not just right that darkness and light the daybreak itself dawn is constantly moving every moment there's a dawn and it's constantly proceeding along the external edge, right, of the circle, right, the circumference of the, of the circle of the, of the earth. What does it mean that a Kaddish Baruch who holds onto the edge of the earth? What does it look like when dawn comes? You ever had, a, you know, one of those things, um, the etch a sketch, you know, and you shake it, right, and it deletes the picture, it's a pellet, you know, how, how that works, it's not amazing. But this is, but this is very similar in a certain way when dawn is breaking a little bit, the darkness is getting shaken away. So that's why this Pasuk follows a Pasuk that spoke about what? That spoke about dawn and daybreak, because this is exactly what's happening. As dawn breaks, it's like a Kaddish Baruch was holding onto that particular edge, right, of the earth, which doesn't have edges because it's circle, it's circular, right? But in that place, a Kaddish Baruch was shaking the darkness away, shaking the dust away. Kain Yinaru is shining then. And says the Malibim, listen to this deepest thing. He says, when that happens and dawn breaks and the darkness gets shaken away and light begins to illuminate the darkness, <laughs> because in every moment where dawn is breaking, <laughs> the Risham are running away from you. So it's not so much, he says, that a Kodesh Baruch who takes the earth, violently shakes it, and all those that aren't really anchored, rooted in with a seatbelt fasten, they fall off. It's that a Kaddish Baruch who is bringing light to the world, more and more light to the world. And those that don't have a shaykhus with light, they don't have kalim for it. They experience it like darkness, much like Makas Choshech, that the Radichvara tells us that ultimately Makas Choshech was the deepest light. That's why it says, but it wasn't the Nakuda that for it was darkness for them and light for the Am Yisrael. It was Bechol Meshvoisam and Moshev Tam, is because they had complete kalim. And Mamela, they were able to experience the Choshech as light. Because to a person that's been sitting in a room for, in darkness for a very long period of time, you open the door, what happens? You know, and the sunlight comes in, you you're like scurrying, you know, in the movies, like when they're in a solitary confinement, they can't handle it when they open the little slat because the, they don't have Kalim for it. They don't have Kalim. And that's Mamash Derisham. Akadish Baruch who brings light to the world steadily, more and more steadily, the Giloy of Him, the Giloy of Essence. And the Risham can't take it. And they're scurrying. It's like mom machine, also like, like mice, right? In a cellar, you open a door and they all go running away. They can't handle the light. That says, that says the Malbim is what it means that Hashem holds, us to, holds onto the edge of earth. What's the edge? It's where dawn is. Dawn is breaking. The darkness is being scattered. But you know who scatters with the darkness is the Rishon. They scamper back into it. Those thieves of night, they are, they are, they are digging in the darkness, but them into houses, and they're, and they're hiding into their pits. And that's what happens as a Kaddish Baruch who brings light to the world. But those that had a Kesha to the Tzadik Emmons and to the Tzadik Amitim, those that are connected to the light of Mashiach that the Tzadik is bringing into the world. And when a Kaddish Baruch who turns up the illumination by a few notches, they're not, they're, not, they're not running into the darkness because they can't handle it because we've already been prepared. And I believe with every fiber of my being that a Kaddish Baruch who has, bring, has been preparing us for Mashiach the last 200 years, we've largely ignored him. Things are changing now. But we've largely ignored him. And a Kaddish Baruch who is trying to upgrade our consciousness to get us thinking 
in a deeper way about Yiddishkeit, about everything. We need a new Torah. We need a new, it's the same Torah. We need a new Gilu. We need a new approach. We need new Chinuch. We need new uh, Hasaga, what parenting is. We have to get ready for Mashiach. Or Mamish getting, the same way we put on physical garments to greet Shabbos, we, we put on Ruchni's garments to greet the, the great day to come. The Yom Shikuri Shabbos. We have to get ready. We have to start preparing. And Akkadosh Baruch has been preparing on staff guide. Rabbi Nachman said, Aisha li tukat ad Mashiach. There's an Aish here. And the more that we connect with the Aish, the less likely we're, we are to scurry and scamper into the darkness. When the Kaddish Baruch Hu turns on the great light, the Biyaz Goyal, the Meher Be'aminu, Amin for Amin. As Hashem, we should be able to see it with our own eyes. Not to come, but to continue to come, to continue to approach, to continue to unfold before our very eyes and to have the merit and schus of being a part of it. Ashrein Mamish, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in on Zoom and on Facebook. Ashrein Mamish, and now we can really get ready for for Hashem. Now we're ready. Ashrein Mamish, thank you so much to everyone who joined. And wishing everybody a phenomenal rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Kalto, thank you so much, everyone. Yashukai. Yeah,